Ads heard during the podcast that are not in my voice are placed by third-party agencies outside of my control and should not imply an endorsement by Weird Darkness or myself. Stories and content in Weird Darkness can be disturbing for some listeners and is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is strongly advised. Welcome, Weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar and this is Weird Darkness. Here you'll find stories of the paranormal, supernatural, legends, lore, the strange and bizarre, crime, conspiracy, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. Coming up in this episode, some of the things your little ones say are just so stinking cute, am I right? But then there are those moments that your child says something completely out of left field that creeps you the heck out. I'll relate a few things parents and other adults on Reddit have shared about what their children have said. If you're new here, welcome to the show. While you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, to visit sponsors you hear about during the show, sign up for my newsletter, enter contests, connect with me on social media, listen to my other podcasts like Retro Radio, Old Time Radio in the Dark, Church of the Undead, and a classic 1950s sci-fi style podcast called Auditory Anthology. Plus, you can visit the Hope in the Darkness page if you're struggling with depression or dark thoughts. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. Now, bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the Weird Darkness. From Godless Atheist. I said something pretty creepy to my parents when I was about 10, so apparently I was making strange noises in my room, and my parents both came in to check out what was going on. The moment my parents came in, I screamed, Ghost! Ghost! Go away! I had a cross necklace, so I put it out in front of them and continued to scream, Ghost! And then I screamed, Sit down! and apparently it scared my dad so much that he actually sat down. The next morning, my parents asked me if I was all right. I had no clue what happened and had no recollection of ever saying any of that. From Gooseberry When I was three years old, I was sleeping in my parents' bed when I sat straight up and asked, Mommy, who is that man in the corner? She was terrified. This happened every night until she went to the corner and pretended to talk to him, asking him to leave us alone because he was scaring me. I still believe in ghosts because of this. From Metalhead 115 Not my story, but my brother told me a few years ago he woke up in the middle of the night hearing his son crying his eyes out over the baby monitor, then a low man's voice saying, "'Shh, be quiet,' and then silence. He ran into the room, and the baby was asleep, and no one else around. Creeped me the heck out. From Nick DNGR My mom tells me that when I was a really small child, we would visit my grandfather's house and often spend the night. She says that once, in the middle of the night, she woke up and I wasn't in the bed, young enough to co-bed, so she got up and I was standing in the living room with my hand in the air like I was holding someone's hand and I said something along the lines of, I can't go with you because my mom didn't say I could. We did not spend the night at my grandfather's house again for another decade. From Cassandra Vindicated My grandparents had a bedroom that everyone thought was haunted. Some suspected it was the bed itself. Over the years, Many people claimed to hear voices in the room and see people in there or about the house. I never really bought it. Well, my parents moved just before the school year was over, so I stayed with them until I finished that grade. I slept in that room every night for about a month, and without fail, every dog in the house would sleep on the bed with me. This was about a dozen medium to large-sized dogs, and they would completely surround me from the time I laid down right until I woke up and got out of bed. My grandma and others claimed that they were protecting me. From Zenithas 
Playing Tea Party, the little one keeps passing me the pretend cake, and I dutifully eat each pretend piece she passes me. It was poison! You died! Oh, okay then. She then proceeded to chop me up, mixed my chopped parts with some spice in a pot, and then served the resulting stew to her mother. From underscore last. Heard a strange hissing noise at 3.30 a.m. through the monitor, and our movement pad went off. Walked into the room, and he was fast asleep. He proceeded to wake up the next morning and tell me that for the last few sleeps he's had, been picked up and flown to a place in Ireland where his six brothers and sisters live. He's managed to name them, and they remain the same each time I ask him about it. Safe to say his mother and I are slightly scared. From Anonymous My sons were about two and four when their pet goldfish died. I attempted to use the situation as an opportunity to discuss death and mortality. After I finished my explanation, my four-year-old looked up at me with his big blue eyes and asked, Mommy, someday will you die? My heart filled with love and a little sadness, knowing this was one of those pivotal moments when the first bit of childhood innocence was lost, and I told him yes, someday Mommy will die. Good, he said, with a total deadpan expression, and walked out of the room. Later, when we were about to flush the fish, he asked if we could eat him instead. I said, no, we don't eat pets because we love them, and he said, when you die, I'm going to eat you. From Alfred F. Jones My three-year-old brother, if God looks after people, who looks after God? Mom said, well, I don't know. Five minutes later, my brother says, I think the Japanese. From underscore Mads I'm the child in this story, but let me tell you about when I was four. I'm named after my maternal grandmother, who died about two years before I was born, and it's worth mentioning that I was the first grandchild born after her death. I was always very curious about her as a young child. One day, my mom laid down for a nap. When she woke up, I was standing at her bedside and looking down on her. Apparently, I had said, do you remember when I was the mommy and you were the baby? From Second Location My kid was in the bathtub one night with the bathroom door open and I was puttering around in the next room. She called out and said, Hey, Mommy, who was that blue guy who just walked down the hall? She said he was tall and thin and featureless, like the shape of those men on the bathroom door like at a restaurant. Creeped me out. From Anchored to Hope My almost two-year-old was in his room, chattering to himself before his nap. I was listening to him. On the monitor, he was saying things like, I'm sleeping, Grandma, okay, Grandma, etc. I went in to try to reset him so he'd fall asleep, he did, by the way, and asked who he was talking to. He said, Grandma. I asked, Grammy V? My mother-in-law's grandparent name. He said, no, not Grammy, Grandma. I gave him a confused look, and he clarified, Grandma Baba. My mother's name was Barbara. She'd been dead for eight years at that point. My son had never heard me refer to her before. I was oddly not freaked out, though it does screw a bit with my atheist outlook. From P.J. Davis my six-year-old son, when asked what he wanted to do when he grew up, said, I think I want to be a fighter pilot or maybe a funeral worker like Daddy. I'm a software engineer. From Leather and Lead This one actually just happened with my four-year-old a week or so ago. I woke up to her laying in the hallway, whimpering and crying while still asleep. I woke her up to put her back to bed and asked if she'd had a bad dream. Barely awake, she said, No, I remembered. Before I was born here, I was a really bad dog, and they made me go to sleep. And then she started crying and saying she didn't want to remember it. When I asked the next morning, she said the same thing and got visibly upset again. I even have audio of her starting to tell me the story, getting upset, then changing the topic. From BLT 2002 
My son was eating chicken nuggets, and he'd always eat the breading off of it first. He takes a bite off the breading and then says, Oh no, your face is missing! From Geek Among Us My son was two. He was in a pattern of waking us up at about 5 a.m. every morning. One morning, I took him downstairs and plopped him in front of the TV so I could try to go back to sleep for about 30 minutes on the couch, right next to him. I woke up a few minutes later and he was standing in the foyer pointing into the kitchen, laughing. He then said, Mommy is floating in the kitchen. I didn't think much of it, went back to sleep for a bit. About 30 minutes later, his mom came downstairs, having just woken up, saying she had one of those weird dreams where she flew out of her body, went downstairs, and found herself in the kitchen. Freaky. More creepy and strange things said by children coming up on Weird Darkness. He is young and intelligent and highly trained. He is Eric Banfeld, shipwrecked on a long-forgotten colony world where brawn and brute strength are more valued than knowledge, physically untrained and emotionally unprepared in the barest skills of survival, he seems compelled to spend a short and very unpleasant life as a half-naked savage worked like a beast of burden on a world so sunk into barbarism that its inhabitants have no concept of the wheel. It's either that or die. His only possible chance, his only hope of becoming one with the folk is to become a singer or teller of stories. But in Eric Banfeld's case, he must be a singer of lies. Singer of Lies, a science fantasy novel by Michael R. Collings. You're a free sample on the audiobooks page at WeirdDarkness.com. From Tulip Angel New house, almost no neighbors, live across from a giant cornfield. Husband at work, well after dark. Son, four, and daughter, two, have been in bed for hours. I'm on the main floor, watching TV. They are upstairs sleeping. All of a sudden, I hear this terrifying, high-pitched giggling. I can't tell where it's coming from. I run upstairs, daughter's in the bed, son's bed is empty. Dang! Go back. Only daughter in daughter's bed. Run to my room. No kid. Still this creepy, creepy giggling. I check the bathroom, the spare room, the closets. I am literally terrified. My kid is gone and all I can hear is this giggling, which the more it happened, the creepier it got. I realized the laughter was coming from the bathroom, so I run back in and check. I whip open the shower curtain and there is my baby boy, curled into as small of a ball as he can get, laughing hysterically, but sound asleep. And that was the night we discovered he could sleepwalk. From Phantom Seriously I don't have kids, but apparently this happened when I was about four. I shared a room with my older sister, and we had huge closets in our bedroom that were about six feet tall. My mother would wake up in the middle of the night to hear me crying, and she'd come in to investigate what was wrong. She then would find me sitting on top of the huge closet, cross-legged and rocking back and forth while crying about, the big scary man put me up here. Since my mother was tired from it being the middle of the night and being heavily pregnant, she didn't really think about how I got up on the closet, but would put me back into bed and comfort me until I fell asleep again. But then my grandmother came to stay with us a few nights, and she told my mother that she woke up in the middle of the night because it got suddenly cold and her bedroom door handle was turning. The door opened, but no one was there, and then the bathroom door opposite her door opened on its own. She stared at the door for a few minutes, not moving because she was in shock and frightened, but then heard me start crying. My mother walked by her room to get to me, and of course I was crying about the man putting me up there. 
My grandmother told my mom what she'd experienced, and my sister slept with my gran, and I slept with my mom for the next couple of weeks after that. It stopped once my brother was born, and to this day I have no idea what really happened. From Puppy Breath My cousin's kid, when he was around four or five, came into the bathroom as I was straightening my hair. He closed the door, looked at me, and said, I don't want to kill you. Creepy. He's 13 now, and whenever I tell him the story, he just laughs his ass off. From Yogzagoth. My four-year-old son said, Daddy, I want to drill into your tummy, crawl inside, and eat your dinner. The food was okay, but I didn't think it was worth that much effort. From Like a Tiger. My three-year-old daughter was in the bath, playing with her toys with me and laughing. Suddenly, her face deadpans. She looks me in the eye and tells me in a serious little voice, Mommy, if you bit and ate all of my fingers off, I wouldn't love you anymore. From Melissa, 132428. I used to babysit two kids, and they each had a video monitor that picked up sound. I put them to bed and was sitting downstairs doing homework, and I thought they were both asleep because it had been like a half hour since I'd put them in bed, and neither kid was shifting around anymore. It was silent except for their breathing through the monitors. It was pitch black outside, and the parents wouldn't be home for another couple of hours. All of a sudden, I heard a little kid's voice singing. I couldn't tell what the voice was saying, but it sounded really creepy. I looked at the monitors and neither kid had moved. Went up to their rooms and checked on them both. Apparently the younger one, three years old, would sing to himself when he couldn't sleep, and his mom didn't tell me that. He was laying perfectly still, singing softly, and I nearly crapped myself when I heard it through the monitor. From Chiselit. When my son was small, I was talking to him about growing potatoes. I described how you bank up the earth around them as they grow, and he said, I used to do that when I was an old man. From Duke of Bun. I was explaining to my niece the difference between things that can and can't change about people. She was confused because she'd met a set of three siblings and the eldest wasn't the tallest. So I told her that one day even she, an itty-bitty four-year-old, could be taller than me, a big, huge grown-up. But even if she was taller, I would always be older. She looked me serious as you like and said, you'll be dead sooner too. From Anonymous Not a parent, but a former teacher. I taught English in a school in Spain, and I wasn't supposed to let the kids know that I speak Spanish so that they're forced to communicate in English. A 10-year-old girl comes up to me one day, grabs me by the hand, and says with the most horrifying straight face ever, Te vas a la muerte, or you're going to die. I was so shocked at the randomness of it that my jaw must have dropped. She then laughed her head off and said, Ha! You do speak Spanish! She then skipped away, laughing and smiling. Creepiest thing a kid has ever said to me, and probably the most clever thing a kid ever did while I was a teacher. From Handshape My son said, When you turn off the lights, that's when the black circles come. They come down like this, and he holds his hands in the air above his bed, and they stay for a second, and then, zoop, they go inside, and he slaps the hands to his chest and then barely holding back tears, he said, I hate it. From True VW Love When my daughter was about eight months old, I was in her bedroom cleaning while she was playing in her crib. I had her monitor turned down, but when I noticed the red lights moving, signaling noise, I turned it up. I heard, plain as day, a child screaming something along the lines of, I'm sorry, no, please, no. The worst part is that I could actually hear him being hit. I lived in a heavily populated area of Pittsburgh, so there was no telling where this was happening. I grabbed my daughter and ran outside anyway, hoping to hear the child scream from an apartment or house so I could call the police, but I couldn't zero in on it. Such a horrible feeling, 
not being able to stop this poor child from being beaten. I never looked at any of my neighbors the same. From The Real Quiz When our dog died, without us yet having properly attempted to explain death, our then two-year-old said, all her thoughts left her body. From Fox on the Run When my niece was around three or four years old, she told me she used to have a baby, but it drowned. The baby was called peanut butter, but still. From Superfish, 1984 My daughter had some imaginary friends for a couple of years named Dodo, Ghana, and The Evil. They just sort of appeared out of nowhere when she was about two and a half years old. It started with Dodo and Ghana, and then, a few months later, she was about three at this point, she came up to me and told me with a creepily expressionless face, the evil is coming over today, and just walked away. Turns out the evil was actually a pretty nice imaginary friend, she just had an unfortunate name. From Chop Suey 25 When I was little, my grandmother, whom I called Pop Pop, always promised to take me fishing. Things always came up, or I wasn't in town to go with him when he went, etc. Well, he died when I was seven, and I never had a chance to go fishing. I'd never gone fishing and have not since he died either. Fast forward 20 years. My wife and I have a three-year-old daughter. I've never spoken to her about my pop-pop, and I've never talked about him in front of her. I haven't brought him up to anyone since before my daughter was born. One day, I'm off with my daughter, and she's in her room. Suddenly, she comes running into the living room where I'm sitting and says the following, Daddy, we have to go fishing. We don't live near a lake or anything, so this was kind of weird for her to say in the first place. I say, why do we have to go fishing? Because Pop-Pop says you have to take me. Wait, what? Who told you? Pop-Pop says you need to take me to go fish. Now, I'm not really a believer in the afterlife or anything, but I dang sure took her fishing. She's not mentioned Pop Pop since then, and it's been almost a year since that happened. From Titan Toss On random nights when my daughter was little, and sometimes in the morning, I'd get woken up by a little girl saying, Peekaboo! I'd wake up, look at the video monitor, and my daughter would be awake every single time. Sometimes staring right at the camera, I looked in her room at every toy, tore apart her crib, etc., looking for what possibly could be saying this. I started getting really creeped out as it continued, and I couldn't explain it. About three months later, when my daughter was about nine months, she woke up from a nap, and I started hearing peekaboo repeatedly. What the? So I ran into her room, and my daughter was pushing on this little soft mirror that is attached to her crib wall. Apparently, the mirror had a button behind it that, when pushed on, said this. When she was younger and just kicked around, she would accidentally kick it when she woke up. Face palm ensued. From Savage AF 100 Fam When my niece was three, she covered up my bed with a blanket and held it down. I moved my head out where I could see her. She said, You can't come out! and smothered me again. I laughed and said, Why? She gritted her teeth and angrily said, Because I don't want you to. From Kaiser the Eleventh I was with my sister, her husband, and their two-year-old daughter. We were talking about loved ones that had recently passed. My father had died some time recently. My brother-in-law went and grabbed a picture of his mother who had died in a car crash when he was six to show me. When my niece saw the picture, though, she started laughing. We asked her what was so funny and she looked at us and said, that's my special friend who sings to me. I still shiver a bit just thinking about it. From Herobotic My niece drew a picture of a man in her room that she kept telling her parents about. He had two different colored eyes, and one was gray. When asked why it was gray, she responded, because he can see the storm coming. From Raven Lily Recently, actually, my son always says odd things. Usually they're funny, but this one threw me for a loop. He's eight. I was telling him how much I love him and thanks for being in my life. He said, I didn't choose this life. I can't control how it began, but I can control how it ends. 
from Eskimo Bob 1. I don't have kids yet, but apparently when I was little, my parents used to hear an indistinguishable mumbling coming from my room on a weekly basis that was blatantly a man's voice. These were the same nights as when my toys would turn on and start playing music in the middle of the night. I have no idea if this is true or not, but for as long as I knew her, my grandmother used to say that my grandfather, he passed away when I was just over a year old, was always watching over me. From Sue Daisy My then three-year-old daughter walked downstairs in the morning and said, look what I can do, and she crossed her eyes. I asked her how she learned to do that, and she said, the boy taught me at night. Uh, what boy? The boy with the glasses. He did this, and she held her finger up and zoomed it to her nose and crossed her eyes. She said that he laughed and laughed. Not too scary, right? Only that's how my brother taught me to cross my eyes when I was five years old. He died when I was seven. From Lori, 1119. We were driving down a dark, snowy highway late one evening, the final stretch of a 16-hour long road trip. My son, who was around four or five at the time, was in the back seat and becoming a bit restless. He suddenly covered his face with a blanket and announced loudly, I don't want to get glass on my face. A few moments later, a pickup truck towing some snowmobiles pulled out in front of a tractor trailer a few cars in front of us and got hit, spinning out in the median. Fortunately, we avoided the accident completely. It was indeed a bit creepy, though, almost as though he predicted that there was going to be an accident right in front of us. From FEOK My kid had woken up early, so she was watching cartoons next to me in my bed while I tried to wake up. I'd heard a funny sound downstairs earlier that I mentally blamed on the dogs. Then, kiddo leans over to me and remarks, Oh, there's a man in the house. Now I'm awake. Awake, awake. I never found anything and never got any further details from her. From Rabbit Hole Gatekeeper My mom stayed with us for a few months when my daughter was three or four. When she moved out, the spare room was still called Nana's room. I asked my daughter to get something upstairs one day. She did and came back to me and said, Who's that old lady in Nana's room? Didn't go in that room ever again. From Anonymous I was just coming home from work, and my two sister-in-laws had been babysitting my one-year-old daughter. They told me they'd just laid my daughter down for a nap, and then one sat in the living room and one went to the bathroom. Suddenly, the one in the living room heard whispering through the monitor at the same time the other sister that had been in the bathroom was walking by and heard it from my daughter's room. Then, my daughter started to freak the heck out, screaming and crying. They, of course, got her the heck out of there, and I walked in the door. Now, my house was not a big house, and my daughter was always adventurous. After that day, she would not so much as get within five feet of her own doorway. We tried to put her to bed that night, and the second we shut the door, she screamed and cried again, so we allowed her to sleep in our bed. The next day was the same just walking by the doorway to the bathroom freaked her out. Luckily, we were moving a few days later to a new house, so we moved her crib into our bedroom and she slept perfectly. She still says she doesn't want to go back to the old scary house to this day. She's three years old. More creepy and strange things said by children coming up on Weird Darkness. I'm a man of habits. Okay, truth be told, my bride says I'm boring. I like the same stuff, and that's what I stick with, and that includes what I eat. Even for breakfast, I used to opt for leftover pizza, hot dogs, hamburgers. Uh, did, did I mention pizza? Anyway, now that I'm trying to lose weight and cut back on the carbs, I've had to make changes for breakfast. Now, instead of a big, heavy breakfast, I just grab one of my Built Bars, the best-tasting protein bar on the planet. Built Bars satisfy my hunger with up to 19 grams of protein and 
also satisfy my sugar craving despite being less than 3 grams of sugar. And at only about 150 calories per bar, if I'm really hungry in the morning, I can grab two of them and still feel good about it. Try replacing your dessert or even a meal like breakfast with a Built Bar. You won't even know it's not really a candy bar. Visit WeirdDarkness.com slash Built and build a box of your own. Use the promo code WeirdDarkness at checkout and get 10% off your entire purchase. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash Built, promo code WeirdDarkness. from So Much Coffee. The following is an exchange that took place between me and my neighbor's kid. Hey, mister, what you doing? Bringing in the groceries, dude. Can I come inside your house? Oh, no, buddy, I'm busy. And your mom would wonder where you went. I don't think she'd like that too much. You mean I really can't? Yeah, bud, sorry. Maybe another time, when your mom knows where you're at. I'm going to use my gun and put a virus in your brain so that you die. I, uh, yeah, alrighty then. Well, uh, groceries. Bye-bye now. From Whiskey Sour Once I was taking a nap on the couch, I was waking up and just as I'm opening my eyes, I see my two-year-old son walking toward me with a serious look on his face. He leans in close and whispers, It happened. He then leaves without another word. For the love of all that is holy, what happened? From Queen GNPWDR Gelatin When my special needs son was 10 years old, he had to have a very serious surgery. It was an eight-hour procedure and a pretty risky operation. We didn't tell him these risks. Right before they wheeled him into surgery, he hugged me and said, goodbye forever. He made it through, and his quality of life was dramatically improved by the surgery. Scariest eight hours of my life, though. From Pit Push Erm My three-year-old grandson has babbled about plane crashes since he started talking. Early this summer, I was reading him a bedtime story. I pause and look up at him, and he says, Granny, I was a pilot. My plane was the Kitty Hawk. I crashed into the water when they shot it off my wing and shot it off my face. It almost stopped my heart. He looked so troubled and sad. I told him that he'd done his best and I was very proud of him and that he was only a little boy now and he need not worry about it, but that if he needed to talk about it, he could anytime. I just hugged him. I researched and Kitty Hawks were used by almost every country early in World War II. So I guess my grandson was a World War II fighter pilot in his previous life? From Lisa Prospectiva I once heard a deep, satanic growling over the baby monitor. Seriously, a deep, growling voice speaking unintelligibly in a menacing tone. Then the sweet baby voice said clearly, Hi, dear. A man was in the baby's room. I was at my sister's house watching a movie while her baby daughter slept. When we heard the man's evil voice on the monitor, we grabbed each other's hands and rushed up the stairs, my sister pausing to pick up her baseball bat. Breathing heavily with fear, we listened outside the nursery door. The chattering was definitely coming from the baby's room, evil, deep voice and happy baby voice chattering incomprehensibly. Something didn't make sense, so, being the dumber, braver sister, I poked my head quietly around the door. To my relief, there was nobody there but the fat, adorable baby reaching upward, chatting. Horrified, we stepped into the room, only to hear the horrible, deep, menacing voice again. Gradually, it dawned on us that the baby had two voices coming out of her tiny mouth, and one was satanic. Was she possessed by demonic forces? We stood over her cot while she smiled up at us happily. "'Who are you talking to, baby?' my sister asked nervously. "'Daddy,' the baby replied, then made the growly voice again. It seems she was entertaining herself with a made-up chat with her beloved daddy. The awful thing was when her father got home and said, "'Hi,' in his deep, gravelly voice, we burst into shrieks of laughter." That baby did a great exaggerated impression of her dad's voice. 
from Words, Words, Words. My daughter said, I want to watch Frozen, but only the part where the parents die in a shipwreck. <sighs> My kid. From Yeah, Like the Groundhog. My three-year-old daughter was going through the monsters under her bed phase. It lasted for weeks, and it was really wearing on her mom and me. One night, after mom tried to put her to bed, she tagged me in. After 30 minutes, I grew pretty frustrated. In a last-ditch attempt, I promised my daughter that there weren't any monsters under her bed. She replied, I know. Now they're behind you. After that, I let her sleep with us for a week. From In Anna's Pocket This morning I was lying in bed and my two-year-old came up and put her face right up to mine. I thought maybe she wanted a kiss. Then she said, Mama, I want to eat your eyes, please. From Unfortunate Birthmark I was tucking in my two-year-old. He said, Goodbye, Dad. I said, No, we say good night. He said, I know, but this time it's goodbye. I had to check on him a few times to make sure he was still there. From Anonymous I was babysitting my niece once while I was staying at my brother's place, and they had the baby camera set up so I could see her on the little TV it came with. I was studying and started dozing off when I heard some whispering and realized it was coming from the monitor. I initially thought it was some feedback or something, but when I looked at the TV, there was a dark shadow near her crib. I've never been more terrified in my life, but the shadow was clearly there where it had not been before. I ran to her room and looked around and saw nothing, but I took her the heck out of there. I went back to the TV, and the shadow was clearly gone. I told my brother what happened, and he pulled me aside and told me not to mention it to my sister-in-law because she'd freak out, but that he had seen the same thing several times now with the same whispering. They stayed in that house for about four more years, and when my niece was just learning to talk, she would tell her mom about her special friend. This, to this day, scares the heck out of me. When they moved out, my brother told me my niece had become inconsolably sad because she would miss her quote-unquote friend. Her mom would tell her that she could bring him along, but all she would say is that he couldn't leave the house. We've never to this day told her about that shadow, and she apparently never saw it. From Labiel87 when my oldest son was about three years old, he said, Mommy, I like you better than my fake mommy. Naturally, I asked, Who's your fake mommy? He replied, You can't see her. She tucks me in after you do. Okay, then. From Felted Skull Puppets My three-day-old infant was sleeping with rapid eye movements, dreaming. I watched her crack a smile, which deepened and turned into a belly laugh. What does a three-day-old infant possibly have to dream about that cracks them up? From Raphael Saiji A friend's four-year-old son said, Uncle S, that's me, Uncle S is going to die in the water. He's going to fall from a bridge and die in the water. He then walked out of the room laughing from Spooky Red. My 12-year-old comes up to me visibly shaken and says that she thinks she saw someone in the bathroom. I asked her to clarify, and she said when she walked past, it looked like someone ducked into the shower. Mind you, it was just her and myself at home at that time, since my husband was at work. So we have our dog, Rango, follow me to the hallway where the bathroom is. My adrenaline is pumping hard, I stop a few feet away from the door and look at Rango. He looks at me, and I point to the bathroom. I kid you not, he understood loud and clear what I wanted. He looks at the bathroom and slowly and carefully stalked towards the door with the fur on his back raised. When I saw him react like this, I was convinced someone was in there, and my heart started racing. Turned out there was no one in there, and Rango just looked at me like, Really? and did that huff thing the dogs do through their nose, somewhat irritated. I still have no idea why my daughter said or did that. From Fred the Fish H 
My uncle has a handful of stories, but I'll tell one of the better ones. One night, over the baby monitor, they heard whispering and what sounded like my cousin's voice. Strangely, though, they heard another voice that sounded like my grandma's. She'd passed away a year before this. They go into her room and asked her who she's talking to, and she says, I was talking to grandma. She helped me find my doll. The doll was on the floor, but when they checked on her, it was in her crib. From Excitable One At about 3 a.m., I wake up to find my six-year-old son just standing next to the side of my bed staring at me motionless. It was a very tense moment up to the point when I finally asked him very easily, you okay, son? He then came back with, I can't sleep. But I still wonder how long he stood there before I woke up. From Tom Zarek When I was about three years old, we had a cat that had stillborn kittens. I asked my father if we could make crosses for them, which he did. As he was making them, I asked, Aren't those too small? He said, What do you mean? I replied, aren't we going to nail the kittens to them? After several moments of silence, he said, we're not going to do that. Oh. From Old Dirt. I was asking my three-year-old if he remembered being born, and then I got to asking him if he remembered what happened before he was born. Without missing a beat or any prompting from me other than that question, he goes, I was in a helicopter that goes round and round and round, then boom, into the ground. From Anonymous. I was sitting with a kid once near a campfire and he seemed to be lost in thought. I asked what he was thinking about. The six year old said, I wish I was high up in space and the whole world was on fire. That would be beautiful. From Jukebox 728. Mommy, will you ever hurt me with a knife? my infant asked. Obviously, I told her no. She followed up with, Okay, good. I know some moms do that. She was three years old when this happened. She had never seen videos or anything that showed child abuse, so I'm not sure how she was aware that some parents hurt their kids. She's also never been abused by anyone. From XYZ I was on a bus recently and we were stopped outside a walk-in clinic. A little girl in the seat in front of me turned around and said, Death is the poor man's doctor. And that was that. From Decidedly Unnecessary My three-year-old son said, Next time I'm a baby, I want to have green eyes. I asked him if he'd been a different baby before being who he currently is, and he squinted his eyes, looked at me like I was an idiot, and said, Yes, Papa. From Psalm 69 I was sound asleep, and at around 6 a.m., I was woken up by my four-year-old daughter's face just inches away from mine. She looked right into my eyes and whispered, I want to peel all your skin off. The backstory here is I'd been sunburned the previous week and was starting to peel. In my sleep-addled state, however, it was pretty terrifying for a few seconds. I didn't know if I was dreaming or what was going on. From Such Valuable Five my niece was about four years old when I heard her laughing in my room. I walked in and asked her what she was doing, and she said, Chucky says if you stick your fingers in your eyes, they come out of your mouth. Then she told me Chucky lived underground. Still gives me chills. From Mista Zig My oldest kept talking in his bed, even hours past bedtime. When we asked him who he was talking to, he said he was talking to the floating white lady. I don't remember the description he gave us, but what I do remember is kid number three doing the same exact routine eight years later. More creepy and strange things said by children coming up on Weird Darkness. No matter the time of day or season, 
Sometimes you need to find a way to rid yourself of those ghostly chills that bring raised hairs and goosebumps to your skin. Other times you're looking for those ghostly chills. Either way, it sounds like you need a mug of Weird Dark Roast Coffee. Weird Dark Roast Coffee has deep notes of cocoa, caramel, and a touch of sinister sweetness that'll send shivers down your taste buds. This is an exclusive coffee that I selected specifically for you, my weirdo family. Weird Dark Roast is not available in stores, coffee houses, mad scientist labs, or even the dark web, but you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash coffee. Weird Dark Roast Coffee – fresh roasted to order so it's as fresh as it can be when it lands on your doorstep and knocks three times. Grab yours now at WeirdDarkness.com slash coffee. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash coffee. Weird Dark Roast Coffee does not actually knock on your door because it doesn't have arms or hands, so if you hear knocks at the door and no one answers when you ask who it is, it's probably paranormal and you should just leave the door shut and locked. From Calgary Chris 77. My son has made so many comments about his plans of keeping my body when I die, I considered specifically putting info into the will to make sure it doesn't ever happen. From Mike Vago. When my son was three years old, he had an existential crisis. He had just discovered death, and every night as I was going to sleep, he would fixate on the fact that everyone's going to die. Despite being a lifelong atheist, I found myself talking to him about heaven, just hoping something would reassure him and make him worry less and maybe go to sleep for a few hours. But this nightly anxiety attack over the inevitability of death went on for months. One night, I calmed him down and he's quiet for a long time. I think he's finally asleep and I'm about to tiptoe out of his room when loud and clear, he screams out, Mama will die tomorrow! I knew this was just his latest bout of worry, but he said it with such conviction I spent the whole next day holding my breath. Maybe he knew something I didn't. From B Dog 719. When I was three years old, we moved into a new home. We were eating dinner in our big, somewhat creepy new house when I apparently stopped and stared at the ceiling. My parents asked if everything was okay. I shush them and reply, we have to be quiet, we don't want to wake up Marcus. Well, we don't know any Marcus, so my parents silently freak out thinking maybe I saw a ghost or something. Long story short, when I used to visit my uncle's place back then, he would tell me to stay quiet because his neighbor, Marcus, lived above them, so I guess I just assumed every unfamiliar house had a Marcus of its own. Definitely spooked my parents good, though from Twinkle Fluff. When my oldest daughter was in kindergarten, she wrote and illustrated her first book, titled I Hope You Die in a Fire. From Dude STFU. I was driving home my three-year-old son, totally quiet, him just staring out the window, until he randomly asks, Hey, Dad, remember that time we all died in a fire? from Pookie Pie. My toddler went through a phase where she would just constantly say hi to things. Hi, 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 all day long. One day it came out sounding more like die, 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 die. So I asked her, what's that you're saying? And she turns to me and just whispers, die. From Michael Condria which, by the way, is the coolest Reddit name I've ever seen. Anyway, Michael Condria wrote, I heard my one-year-old's high chair move, even though nobody was near it. I asked my three-year-old, what was that? And he said, while pointing to the chair, what is she doing here? From Jeff Eaton My kid's Catholic school is over a hundred years old. There's a basement under the gym that's used for storage. I was substituting once, and during recess, one of the kickballs rolled down the stairs. A little girl was standing at the top of the stairs yelling, just throw it up at me. I went over and asked who she was talking to, and she replied, that big man at the bottom of the stairs. I went down there. There was nobody there. There was no other way in, and hardly anyone ever went down there. I asked some of the other kids if they had seen the man before, and they said, yes, but sister told us not to talk to him. 
I asked them to describe this sister, and they described a nun. There haven't been nuns at the school in 40 years. From Johnny Brill Cream My four-year-old son had a habit of announcing when he had to use the bathroom. He would say, I gotta go potty. One time he makes his business known and heads off toward the bathroom. He returns seconds later and says, there's already someone in the bathroom. Now, I do know for a fact that it's just the two of us at home, so the hair stands up on my neck. I ask him, what do you mean? He repeats, there's already someone in the bathroom. So I grab the biggest knife I can find and tell him to stay here. I walk to the bathroom, take a wide angle to see in. Nobody in sight. Slowly and quietly, I walk toward the shower and pull back the curtain. Nothing. By now, my son has walked around the corner and I ask him, where did you see the person? He points to the unflushed toilet and says, see, someone's already here. His big brother hadn't flushed the toilet. From Susie QP. When my son was about five years old, he started having night terrors. Eyes wide open, he would stare into an abyss of his own invention and scream with the chilling ferocity of hell itself. I would hold him and rock his rigid little body until he loosened back to sweaty, deep sleep. What I never told my husband or the pediatrician or even my mother was that I was afraid of him during those nighttime bouts of what looked and felt like nothing less than demonic possession. I was afraid of my own sweet child and wanted to run away. From Posier Ra I pulled out a wad of money one day. My little kid promptly yelled, Strippers! Not sure who taught him that. From Anonymous Me, when I'm a kid, I say, Mommy, look what I learned! and then I inserted my tongue into my mom's mouth during a goodnight kiss. I learned it from a movie, I said. It means you love someone. Mom calmly gets up without saying a word and walks to her room. I still cringe pretty hard whenever I remember doing that. From Tacos and Tequila 35 My son started refusing to go downstairs, saying that there was an evil angel man down there that wanted to hurt the whole family. He consistently drew the same picture of said angel man, too. Who knows what that was really about? From Linum 18 It's one in the morning. I'm fast asleep with my wife in the living room reading. All of a sudden, the baby monitor is blaring my 16-month-old son's laughter into my ear. So I jump up, run into his room, and he is standing in his crib pointing at the corner of the room and giggling hysterically. I just stared at him for a few seconds before I grabbed him and put him in bed with me. From Hyperion Wins Again I have twin daughters. One day, while playing outside, one looked up at the sky and said, The sky is cracked and it's on fire. My other daughter looked up and said, Yes, the people are screaming. Then they went back to playing with dolls. Fingers crossed they're not predicting the future, everybody. From Sir Lemming. My oldest daughter occasionally sleepwalks. A few weeks ago, she came out of her room and entered the living room where me and my wife were watching TV. I asked her what was wrong, and all she said was, The rabbits won't stop screaming. Then she turned around and went back to her room. Not gonna lie, it creeped us out. From Regina. The flat we live in belonged to my husband's grandmother, who died long before I was ever in the picture. He was 18 years old when she died, and instead of selling it, he just moved in with some of his buddies. Then I moved in, and then later they moved out. My son will often talk to himself, mostly babbling while he's playing alone, but sometimes in full-on conversations. We're also trying to teach him English, so if he says something in French, I'll ask him to repeat it in English for me. One day he announces, Grandma doesn't like it when I speak English. She says it's an ugly language. I just sort of laughed it off, and my husband asked him if she had a problem with Mommy's accent. No, she said Americans you can understand at least, not like when you had that friend from Liverpool stay here. There was a scouser, a guy from Liverpool, that lived with them for a few weeks when it was him and his roommates. 
some friend of a friend who was looking for a flat. I didn't even know about the guy, and there's no way my son would have. From Scary Strangle My six-year-old daughter was in the passenger seat a few days ago and looked up at me and said, Dad, when I'm seven, I'm going to kill you. No, wait, when I'm eight. I asked, how are you going to do that? She smiled and said, I'm going to drive over your head with this car. From Jim Parsons Rocks My dad watched his mother die of a ruptured gallbladder when he was 12 and still remembers it vividly. My sister, one day, randomly gets up almost an hour after she's gone to bed and goes up to him. The conversation went like this. My sister said, Daddy, your mommy died in red sweater, jeans, sneakers, and with her hair in a ponytail, right? And her hair was blonde? My dad drops the book he's reading and stares wide-eyed and then says, yes. And my sister said, what color were her eyes? Blue, he said. Why? Oh, she doesn't have them anymore, just empty sockets. I was curious. She goes right back to bed. From Redheaded Bug Okay, so, my daughter is now almost two and has long since moved into her own room. We have one of those video monitor things where you can see and hear the baby on this little TV thing, or you can turn the picture off and just get sound. So one night, maybe a month ago, I'm sitting in bed, scrolling through Reddit or something, and I start hearing my daughter babbling to herself. Now, it's really late, like one or two in the morning, much later than she is ever awake, unless something is wrong and she is sick or cutting a tooth or something. So I turn the picture on the monitor on and see her standing up in her crib, facing sort of diagonally away from the camera. I can see her hands in front of her, but only like half of her face. Now is a good time to mention that we have been teaching her ASL, American Sign Language, since she was about three months old, and she's been responding and conversing in sign since about 10 months. I can see her signing things like the words nice, silly, and fun, and oddly enough, no, don't, like, and bear. Of course, being the good parent that I am, and really not wanting to deal with an overly sleepy baby in the morning, I get up to see what the heck she's doing. When I get to her room, she is still standing up and signing and babbling towards the far corner of the room. I asked her what she's doing and who she's talking to, and she signs and says, as best as she can, friend, which she does with her whole hands, not just her index fingers, and signs bear again. I tell her that no. See, Bear, who's actually one of her stuffed toys, is in bed behind her, not in the corner of the room. She just giggles at me and signs and says, silly and mommy. I can see she is wide awake, so I sit down in the rocker next to her bed and try to figure out what woke her up. But all she'll tell me is friend and bear, and occasionally she'll duck down like she's hiding and making shh noises. I finally get fed up and asked her who Friend Bear is, and her response literally gave me chills because she doesn't speak well yet, but she managed to say very clearly and with the most serious face a 20-month-old can pull off, no name, no name, shh. Well, now I am well and truly freaked out, so I tell her to ask No Name Friend Bear to go home because it's too late to play and I did what any good loving mother would do. I gave her a pacifier, went back to my room, turned off the monitor entirely, and hid under the covers in my room where my good and loving husband would protect me from nameless invisible bears. From Polite Werewolf When my father was a kid in the 60s, he'd go into the living room in the middle of the night, turn the TV on to static, climb on his rocking horse, and slowly rock back and forth in the dark room only lit by the TV static and slowly say, I hate mommy, I hate mommy, I hate mommy, over and over again. My grandmother says it was the creepiest thing she's ever seen. Well, that and the UFO. From Elk Attack I had a music teacher who took his four-year-old daughter to an old theater in Alaska. She started crying immediately when she walked in, so he took her outside and she stopped crying. He took her back in, she started crying again, so he took her outside again. He asked her why she was crying, and she said, that's where the people with no eyes watch you.
Thanks for listening. If you like the show, please share it with someone you know who loves the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, or unsolved mysteries like you do. You can email me anytime with your questions or comments at darren at weirddarkness.com. Darren is D-A-R-R-E-N. Weirddarkness.com is also where you can find information on any of the sponsors you heard about during the show, find all of my social media, listen to audiobooks that I've narrated, sign up for the email newsletter, find other podcasts that I host, including Retro Radio, Old Time Radio in the Dark, Church of the Undead, and a classic 1950s sci-fi style podcast called Auditory Anthology. Also on the site, you can visit the store for Weird Darkness t-shirts, mugs, and other merchandise. Plus, it's where you can find the Hope in the Darkness page if you or someone you know is struggling with depression or dark thoughts. And if you have a true paranormal or a creepy tale to tell, you can click on Tell Your Story. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. All stories on Weird Darkness are purported to be true unless stated otherwise, and you can find links to the stories or the authors in the show notes. Creepy Kid Talk is taken from an article by Jesse Silverberg for MoneyMade.com, which in turn was taken from Factinate.com. Weird Darkness is a registered trademark. Copyright Weird Darkness. And now that we're coming out of the dark, I'll leave you with a little light. James 3 verses 9 and 10 With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. And a final thought. Good relationships don't just happen. They take time, patience, and two people who truly want to be together. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me in the Weird Darkness. Hey Weirdos! Our next Weirdo Watch Party is coming up fast! It's Friday, February 9th! The gruesome twosome of Graveyard Cinema, Horrible Henry and Mad Marty are presenting 1950's Quicksand, starring Mickey Rooney and Peter Lorre. I suppose you'll know what you're getting into. This isn't a car theft. It's kidnapping. In the film, a man takes $20 from his employer to go on a date, planning to replace the money the next day but he falls increasingly into more disastrous circumstances and further in need of more money, and it spirals out of control. Did you ever hear anybody say money talks? Join us Friday, February 9th for Quicksand. It's free to watch online, and you can chat along with the rest of us weirdos as we watch the movie together. How about the girl? You leave her out of it. She had nothing to do with you, understand me? The show begins at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific. You can watch a trailer for the film and watch horror hosts and schlocky B-movies anytime, day or night, on the Weirdo Watch Party page at WeirdDarkness.com. I want that coat, and I'm going to get it. For $2,000? For whatever it takes. 1950's Quicksand, starring Mickey Rooney and Peter Lorre. You better come and see me or else. Or else what? Or else something is going to happen to you. To you, Danny boy. Friday, February 9th, on the Weirdo Watch Party page. I'll kiss you goodbye if you want me to. Hey, Weirdos! Be sure to click the Like button and subscribe to this channel, and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash listen.